Father, we give you praise. We thank you because you are faithful. Thank you for the things that you have been doing in our midst. We are grateful. We are very grateful. We thank you. Thank you for your word tonight. Let your word challenge us. Let it open us to new realms in the spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence for making the word alive in our spirits. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is doing great things in our midst. And tonight, I want to teach on something very powerful. Hallelujah. I pray that the word of God will bless our hearts. God bless you. Please be seated. Good to see everyone. Can you walk up to two people? walk up to two people don't sit down just tell them hi some of you are very antisocial say say hi you are looking at the person what is wrong with hi I mean hi not high hallelujah praise God Tonight I'm going to be sharing on a very powerful topic. Hallelujah. I title it Faith in the Faithfulness of God. Faith in the Faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that the Word of God the, the blessings of the word of God is that the, the word of God please look up everybody the word of God gives us an opportunity all right, to number one understand the character and the nature of God say after me the character of God and the nature of God so when you study scriptures right, you, you find in scripture instances that demonstrate the character and the nature of God hallelujah and then you also find the ways of god his methods and his principles so the word of god gives us the opportunity to know god listen the powerful thing about knowing a man hallelujah now i know god is great and you know we cannot fathom all of him the depth the height the length the breadth but do you realize that God wants us to come to a point where we know him hallelujah and the degree to which you know God uh, it will put you in a position where you can I'm careful to use my words now fairly predict him the strength of the knowledge of a man that you know is that you can predict the man hallelujah if you know me so well you can know that ah, I don't like goat meat for instance no in real life I'm not just preaching I don't like it <laughs> hallelujah so if God is leading you to bring a goat for me here well <laughs> hallelujah are you understanding me the degree to which you know someone is the degree to which you can fairly predict the person because you understand the nature and the character of that person and on account of that nature and character you can predict you can talk on behalf of the person are you following me now if i know sam so well when you ask me a question i will not need to go and ask him by reason of that knowledge i can know i understand his ways and his pattern of doing things are you following me now when you see certain manifestations you can know that no this is not sam are you following me now so the knowledge of god listen it's not just a vague pursuit into the realm of the spirit the knowledge of god is the knowledge of his nature and his character when you understand who god is the revelation of who he is and all that he represents alongside his ways and principles will let you know god so that someone can come and talk like god and act like god but out of the depth of your revelation of who god is you will know that this is not god hallelujah 
have you ever tried to call someone and mimic maybe the voice of the person's mother or wife or husband and the person just says no way you are not the one it's called knowledge there is a knowing i follow me now very powerful so scripture affords us the opportunity to know god hallelujah to understand the character to understand the nature as we explore the knowledge of the nature of god you see the way he dealt with the nation of israel you see the way he dealt with people in different dispensations and it can help you to arrive at certain conclusions and the name you give god is a derivative of the conclusions you have had based on his nature every name of god in the bible reveals his nature and his attributes one time we'll take a series on the names of god and you will understand that the names of god in scripture they are not just hebrew or greek names they are ladders into the knowledge of god god revealed himself in scripture progressively hallelujah they knew him as elohim they knew him as jehovah they knew him as adonai all of these names were progressions and it's a ladder into the knowledge of god because we have to know god constructively just like you build right and so scripture affords us the opportunity to know god so anytime you say i want to know god for many of us we don't even know what we are talking about we just feel emotional and we cry and say lord i want to know you we don't have an idea right now whenever you say lord i want to know you what you are saying is lord grant unto me by grace a revelation of your nature your character your attributes bring me to a point where i i have understanding of who you are hallelujah moses said that if i have found favor in your eyes let me see your glory and god responded by saying my goodness you will you cannot see He said, I want to see your what? Glory, kabod, doxa. The weightiness of all that you are and all that you represent. And he told Moses, he said, the dimension of me that you are seeing on this mountain, I am revealing my goodness. The glory of God represents the entirety of all that he is. All that makes him God. So when you begin to explore the glory, you are exploring the knowledge of the nature of God. Hallelujah. In history, we study people, right? We take certain figures and we begin to dissect their lives. We study them. And you can study them so well that when you talk about them, it looks like you finished drinking tea with them. Knowledge. Hallelujah. And so God wants us to know him. Because the strength of your work with God is based or founded upon your knowledge of him. The ancient were very confident and they walked the earth with such confidence and power. We're going to be looking at a few scriptures because they knew God. I noticed that the progression of God as he dealt with the people of old is that he first revealed himself and then he sent them. Hallelujah. And they went with such confidence. Imagine the disciples. They had been with Jesus. They had seen him. They had... They had seen his compassion, his power, his ability. And then he said, now, go to the Lordship of Israel. He said, take no bags. Do not take anything. And none of them asked any question. They didn't say, ah, God, what are you saying? Our doubt is a byproduct of the deficiency of the knowledge of God that our spirits are yet to come. For when we know him as he is, when we see him as he is, when the revelation of who he truly is downs upon our spirits, there will be no room for doubt again. That's why I named it faith in the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to start by exploring one scripture, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. We'll read it together. First Corinthians. I see the smoke of his presence all around this place. All around. There's a song that says, Consuming fire. 
sweet perfume his awesome presence fills this room this is holy ground This is holy ground. This is holy ground. I tell you, his presence is in this place. Hallelujah. Are you ready? First Corinthians 1, verse 9. Let's read together. One to read. Just the first three words, one to read. Again. He said, God is faithful. That's what we are going to explore that, that one first before we... God is faithful. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He said, hey people, God is faithful. What does it mean for a man to be faithful? Hallelujah. It means that man is dependable. You see why we sang all the songs that we sang? Hallelujah. To be faithful means that you are dependable. You are reliable. Another word. Um, you really cannot use that word for God, but in a general sense, you are predictable. Hallelujah. God is faithful. Can someone read it from Amplified? A loud reader. I like the way Amplified puts it. Amplified. Hold on. Let's take it one by one. He said, God is faithful. All right. Reliable. Trustworthy. And therefore ever true to his promise. Hold on. He said, God is faithful. Reliable. What does he mean, reliable? You can rely on him. Trustworthy. He can be trusted. He said, and therefore, on account of these attributes, he is ever true to his word. God is faithful. All right? Finish. Though. And he can be depended on. By him, you were called into partnership, companionship, koinonia, and participation with his son, Jesus Christ. Let me explain this scripture to you. Listen. The Bible says we have been called into what? Partnership. Participation with the Spirit. Are you following me now? What does that mean? We have been called to be partakers of His nature, of His royalty, of His dominion, of everything that Christ is. And all that He represents. The Bible says Christ is the express image of God. And the Bible says God has called us. Are you following me now? But God knew that that statement would be too big for many believers to believe. And he said, before I say that, God is faithful. He was about to make a dangerous statement. He said, God, it, it was enough, it would have still made sense to just say, God has called us. Are you following me now? Are, are you getting me? Why did he say God? is faithful there is a little revelation there that if we neglect we will never understand the power of what paul was attempting to communicate god is dependable god is reliable when he says a thing he means it he's not playing games with you he's not playing pranks he's not just trying to play hide and seek he said god is faithful hallelujah faithfulness is the attribute of god that many people do not know we know him as being the holy one we know him as being the righteous one but we do not know and let me tell you the foundation of true christian faith is hinged upon the revelation of the faithfulness of god can god be trusted can god be depended upon Many of us look at our government and we say we don't trust this government again. What does that mean? They have failed you. Is that correct? So, can God, the first question tonight is can God be trusted? Does he qualify to be trusted? Are you following me now? Does he qualify? 
Is there any litmus test? Is there any basis that we can use to judge and conclude that God is truly faithful? Hallelujah. Because when we know that God is faithful, then we will esteem every word that comes from him. Are you seeing? Doubt is, doubt is simply, I'm telling you, it's a byproduct of lack of the knowledge of the faithfulness of God. He called Abraham. He said, Abraham, come out. I hope you understand that Abraham was not the first to be called. The covenant was supposed to be with his father, Terah. And he missed it and died. And God called Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. The Bible says that God called Abraham. He said, Abraham, come out of your father's house. Every tribe, every tongue. And go to a land that I will show you. Hold on. Did he tell him the name of the land? He said, go to where? A land, not the land. Go to a land. How can you ask a man to leave his house? A matured man. Abraham was not a teenager. Are you following me now? A matured man. Imagine Abraham packing his things with all his servants. Abraham, where are you going? A land. How intelligent does that sound? We are examining the faithfulness of God. So that we can build our faith upon that faithfulness. And he told Abraham, he said, if you will obey me and can take me by my word, this is what I will do to you. I will bless you. I will multiply you. I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. In this shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Abraham was just listening to Hebrew and was just looking, you mean God, you will do this? And he said, follow me. To where? Are you following me now? And Abraham began to move without any knowledge of where he was going to. Hallelujah. Total dependence on God. And the Bible makes us to understand that at a certain time, he complained to God that he did not have a child. And God told him that he was going to give him a son. And that his the inhabitants that will come from him will be like the sons of the seashore. When he shared it with his wife, his wife said, okay, I've had you. Stupid man. At this age of your life, after suffering like this, you are supposed to bring words of comfort. You are now saying, God is saying, we'll carry our child. Hmm. Paul said, God is faithful. Are you following me now? Can I tell you something? The faithfulness of every man is hinged upon his ability. Are you listening to me? As, as much as I love you, come. As much as I love you, if I promise you that all through koinonia service, I will carry you today. You see that? I'm going to break that promise. Why? Because my word is not commensurate to my ability. I may not have that strength. Are you following me now? God weighs his ability and the vastness of all that he has and tells you that I have too much resources in me to validate no matter what challenge comes. He said, I am still God and I can fish out infinite ways to cause my word to be manifested in your life. God is faithful. Do you know how many times, listen to me, do you know how many times God made a dangerous statement in the garden? He said, the seed of the woman shall what? Bruise the head of the serpent. Watch the drama that happens from Genesis until the Gospels. Do you know how many times Satan almost intercepted the manifestation of the seed of the woman? But the faithfulness of God backing that word ensured that Jesus was born. Some people had to die for God to be faithful. Some people had to be relocated. God moved beyond a man's spiritual life because he was faithful. Joseph, wake up. Take this child and run away. They're about to kill him. The Bible says God is faithful. Hallelujah. He ties his reputation to his faithfulness. And so there are certain things that when God does, it's really not because of you. 
Do you understand? God is under obligation. It's not pride. There is no other God. So if he fails, who else will you trust? Do you understand? There is no other God. That's why I sang that song, Unchangeable God. He said, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son. If I look at you right now, and I tell you tomorrow by 5 p.m., um, I will organize a little meeting for you, 20 people, and it will be a breakfast meeting. What happens? You must know me and unconsciously weigh my ability and calculate 20 people. If everybody is going to eat 500 naira, 20 times 5 is what? 500 times 10,000. I say, can this guy afford 10,000? When you weigh me, you say, truly, I believe. I follow me now. If I look at you and say, tomorrow by this time, you are going to enter a home at 3. You say, hallelujah. Are you following me now? So, listen. I need you to understand that when God makes a statement about your life, he doesn't make the statement and runs back to his throne and checks if he has the resources to back what he's saying. Are you following me now? See, when the first creation, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, when the first creation went away, God had the ability to still speak everything. But do you know something? God is so mighty. There is nothing called past. There is nothing called present. There is nothing called future. There is nothing called time in his presence. There is nothing called disadvantage. God can make a woman to give birth without a man. God can make a man to give birth without a woman. It's just that it's not necessary. Occasion has not created it. Are you listening to me? God can make stones. He say, if you will not praise me, I'm showing you the attributes of God. God is faithful, dependable. So before God will make a statement, he will first look at himself and ask himself, can I defend what I'm about to speak? And God looks and says, Abraham, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. He said, you can take me for my word. Watch and see. And Abraham, it looked like nothing will happen. Suddenly, Isaac comes into the scene. And Abraham is humbled. Sarah is humbled. And everybody says, truly, God is faithful. And now God says, Abraham, let me see how much you trust me. Take now thy son, that son that came on account of my faithfulness, and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. A mount again. A mount again. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and carried Isaac. Why? Because his faith was hinged upon the faithfulness of God. The Bible shares his contemplations with us in the book of Romans chapter 4. How that Abraham believed that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. He said, God, you are so faithful. I don't know what to tell my wife after I murder my child. But you are going to guide me as I explain to her. In any case, I will obey you. Are you following me now? And he took Isaac. And when God saw that Abraham could give Isaac, he said, Abraham, wait suddenly from nowhere a ram was tied the horn was inside you know it was just tied the ram could not run anywhere where the ram came from where the tree came from that tied him this is a mystery that we ask God when we get to heaven God is faithful hallelujah the faithfulness of God he swore unto Abraham and told him that his people will be in the land of captivity and after a while a period of 400 years they will go out although it was delayed god is faithful moses goes to pharaoh and says pharaoh let my people go and pharaoh laughs the which god sent you now we have so many there's the god for son there's one for children there's one for our farm there's one for fruitfulness which of them and that's why Moses said, God, you better clarify. Who are you? I don't want to embarrass myself before Pharaoh. Who are you? And he said, I am that I am. Listen, he wasn't answering Moses yet. 
he said i am he said moses it looks like you do not know me i know there are many gods and it's easy to join me in all of those classes but i give you a name that none of them have i am that i am i am whatever you can conceive in your mind let your mind grow wild it will still not stretch a glimpse of all that i can be he said moses on account of this revelation i am so when Moses threw his staff, Pharaoh laughed. That's a discouraging laugh. When you move to your enemy, is supposed to be crying. When your enemy laughs, it will challenge your faith. Pharaoh said, ah, wow, Moses, this has been our system. When he threw, if Moses did not know the faithfulness of God, the logical thing to do is to run away. Run back to the burning bush, but he laughed. I am is faithful. He can become something. There is still a method. There is a in him is a new dimension of wisdom that you have not seen. And God said, Hold on, let me show you my faithfulness. Suddenly, a snake didn't expand, didn't increase in size, swallowed the other snakes and became a rod again. And Moses held it. I control matter and time. God is faithful. Are you following me now? We are examining, I want to challenge your faith. Because many of us have faith in God, but we do not know what attribute of God should be the foundation. Faith in what? The holiness of God? Or faith in the righteousness of God? So when we say we have faith in God, that's a vague, it's like saying I'm studying science. You must know which attribute of God your faith lies upon. Hallelujah. And Pharaoh said, see, you don't know me. These people will not go. And God said, really? You are challenging my faithfulness. In other words, Pharaoh, so you want to prove that I am a liar. He said, this is a contest you want to try with me. All right, let's go ahead. And at a point, he understood the significance of the firstborn. And God stroked all of the firstborns. And Pharaoh said, wow, I give up. I now know that there is one higher than me. He said, Moses pack all your people quick he said the bible said they spoiled he said to show you i am faithful you will not just leave egypt you will spoil the egyptians these were people who would not even give them straw but now give them gold silver cattle and pharaoh confessed he said please pray for me as you are going hallelujah now he left the people were happy they were all singing truly god is faithful suddenly pharaoh said i his ego was stung. He said, lie, lie, I'm following them. And he saddled his chariots and was running. And the faithful one, I can imagine God looking from his throne and say, man, man, when will you learn? Man, Pharaoh, you were a baby. I was responsible for your development. When have you started challenging my faithfulness? And he said, for this, I will so show my faithfulness. And the nation of Israel, they were all afraid. And Moses got to a place... You see, when you are leading people and you get to a crossroad, ask God for direction. The same people who were jumping now now met Moses and said, Moses, don't get us annoyed. We were happy with our garlic and cucumber and all. You have brought us to die. And Moses said something. In Exodus 14, he said, stand still. He said, I may in myself, I'm paraphrasing now, not know what to do to you, but God is faithful. Before us is a Red Sea. I hope you understand that even if that Red Sea divides, all you are going to see is, is a deep gully. Are you following me now? So it's not like the water parted and then they saw ground like this. The water was, it was a Red Sea. Red means danger. It was a Red Sea. Hallelujah. And the faithful one who watches over his word to perform it was just watching. And he told Moses, when Moses went to him, Moses quickly comforted the people and ran to God and said, God, now look at what you have brought me into. And God said, Moses. See, there is a dimension of faithfulness of God that when you have seen, he becomes more strict in his dealings with you. There are some things he expects from you on account of the knowledge of his faithfulness. He said, Moses, you mean after all you have seen, you are still coming to ask me questions? Ask the people to move forward. How would you like to do that? I'm sure Moses was not the strongest person in Israel here. 
and even if he was leading two point something million people you better be careful they will crush you and disintegrate your bones and Moses comes to the people he says all nation of Israel share ye the word of the Lord move now Bible history tells us the water did not part don't think the water just parted that's what many of us want the water parts and he say oh thou faithful one he said God asked me to tell you Bible history said they started literally they started walking into the water yes yes they walked and the water got to a point suddenly the Bible says Psalms that with the breath of his nostrils he said let me show you how faithful I am and the sea parted and the ground lifted and the sea became walls water standing hanging in space he said God is faithful the faithfulness of God when the, I wonder what was going through their minds when they were passing let's hurry up oh, before this thing comes down I mean how did it happen in the first place that's how God gives you a blessing and you are afraid of it because you think something bad will happen God is faithful oh he can be dependable am I blessing you tonight is faithful and guess what to make a caricature out of Pharaoh they were on chariots are you following me now so logically and these were the best of chariots they ran it was a long sea so while the Israelites were going the Egyptians were into the sea too are you following me now I'm sure everybody just looking at the sun and say will you hurry up I'll be this water will just cover us here my friend hurry up everybody driving their goats and their cattle and everything are you following me now? And the Bible says the faithful one suddenly made the tires. Because the Bible said they were walking on dry ground. So there was no mud. Suddenly from nowhere, the one who holds matter and time and space started walking upon their tires. And they could not understand. And when Moses crossed, God told him, oh yeah, cover the sea. The revelation of the faithfulness of God will kill doubt forever in your life. Are you following me now? You see why God got angry every time the nation of Israel doubted his words? Because he told them, he said, now all of you are growing older. Make sure you gather the children and teach them this thing. Let them know all of these my attributes because there are still so more miracles to be done favored, and there are still you, more challenges to face and they will need to Hallelujah. draw from the archives of what I have then done. Then he said everything and the angel began to say, make sure you ponder them. what kind that's of That's why every time God does a great thing, they build a monument. And then he began to tell her how that she was going to conceive. Why are we doing this? Why, why are we celebrating the house of this thing? Why are we doing things that I do not know? And the angel looked at her. He could understand with her Truly, he because there was a level of and the knowledge of God she did not know. Is that correct? And so he took out time to explain to her. He said, this is the musicians. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Them again. And then that child, that which we conceive of you. At the time God Moses died. died. But when Zechariah Joshua was now next in command. Hallelujah. So God sent an angel and he came. Zechariah was a priest. He was a priest anointed to function. He had seen the faithfulness of God on many fronts. Are you following me now? And when the angel appeared to him and told him that his wife, Elizabeth, was going to bear his son, Zechariah started asking all kinds of questions. And Gabriel said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. He said, this guy you are anointed. This your mouth is conflicting what God wants to do. And if we don't do something about it, you are going to corrupt the manifestation of John who will forerun the coming of Christ. Therefore, be deaf, be dumb. And that's what happened to him hallelujah so that he would not interrupt the things that God was going to be doing when John was born the Bible says they asked him they said what is the name of the child he wrote John his mouth opened nobody prayed for him no hands were laid upon him the moment he confirmed that it's true I've been quiet for months better this John open my mouth for me hallelujah I have learned something about God in my little life. God 
is greatly encouraged with a man who can take him by his word that when God speaks to you the trouble is whenever God speaks to us the first thing is we begin to calculate mathematically how it will be done so God says I will bless you say ah Uncle Rav Japan I will call you and you go and check his number you check your jota you insult everybody in your house till you find it later you are breathing and you just said Uncle Rav good day is it day or night in Japan is that what God told you the Bible says I mean God God spoke to you that he would bless you you see faith must not lean on any other auxiliary substance many of us want our faith to stand you are standing but let me wage it with something in case God does nonsense for me it's because we are, it's because we are not sure hallelujah we are not sure have you ever tried to plan something I say let's do plan B because the way I'm perceiving this thing we, we are not ready to be embarrassed we are going to this restaurant I sense in my spirit two restaurants that we have seen we usually eat they are closed this one may be closed I follow me now and so that lack of confidence it brings doubt but when you are absolutely sure when you are absolutely sure look at me there is a paper in this Bible two of us just answer there's a paper in this Bible two or false now the answer is it's impossible to say how true it is do you understand because it is left it is not except by discernment you cannot know whether you have never opened my Bible to see it I follow me now let me try to find one paper okay I found one I want you to get this concept can you see a paper everybody can you see a paper is there a paper in this bible are you sure what if you are lying what if you are lying what if from the time i was closing it wind pushed it and some scientific forces of nature just came and something happened you know radio waves just came things are happening these days what if there is nothing how many of you can pledge everything in your bank account to prove that there is a paper in this Bible. Ah, I mentioned bank accounts. Some of you refuse. Have our believers. It's part of the story. This is not real life now. It's part of the explanation. <laughs> Hallelujah. My dear, please stand up. Is there a paper in this Bible? Are you confident? What should we do to you if we check again and we don't find it? Are you following me? Now, many of you are laughing, but you are not getting the point I'm trying to put. Are you seeing now? The first time I asked you the question, many of you are saying yes, no, yes, no. But there was something that suddenly happened to you that did what? There was a revelation when I opened it. And it brought a degree of confidence that nobody... Look at all of the points I started bringing. Are you following me now? The reason why we doubt God and we doubt his ways is because there is a revelation of his faithfulness we are yet to comprehend. This is why he left us the testament of the word. That when we read through, we will see. God is saying, did I fail anybody? Read. I put my character to test. Check it from Genesis to Revelation. Do you not see that all those who trusted me smiled at the end? The Bible says, who through faith in that faithfulness, men subdued the mouth of lions. Daniel, Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Elijah, all kinds of people. In the days of Hezekiah, the Bible makes us understand that the king set themselves to, I mean, they wrote a letter threatening Hezekiah. He took it to God and he cried. And the Bible says, God gave them a strategy. The same God told them he said this is going to be how it you will arrange the armies the worshippers will lead the way and then you will just sing and dance what kind of army is that if the Nigerian soldiers with what is going on in this country saw these people with trumpet not guns trumpet there are, are police people standing outside here imagine if you came in and saw them just holding trumpets and say we're going to have beautiful praise tonight but that's what happened the strategy of God and the Bible says suddenly enemies began to fight themselves. They killed these people and when they finished, they killed themselves. 
Yes, they had to kill themselves. Who killed the last person? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you following me now? Say after me, God is faithful. When a man throws his CV and says, go through it, I give you the power to scrutinize me. If you find anything faulty with my nature, bring it to my notice. This is what God did. This is why everybody has access to a Bible. Are you following me now? He said there's nothing to hide. Go through it on your own. Beyond your man of God. And God gave other people wisdom to transcribe it into Greek and Hebrew and King James. He said use every English you can. Some Bibles are in your language now. Are you following me now? He said so that you will have no excuse. I want the entire world to scrutinize my faithfulness. And if at any point anyone finds out that I was not faithful, let me know and I will cease to be God. Hallelujah. And so Paul is speaking to the people and he says, guys, I'm about to give you a revelation. But like many other patriarchs of old, when God talks like this, they don't understand. So he said, God is faithful. So whatever I'm about to tell you, you should know that God is not playing about it. He said, God is faithful by who you were called into fellowship participation oneness that means he called you into his victory he called you into his wisdom he called you into his power he called you into his favor he called you into his authority he called you into his realm now is god playing is god just cracking some jokes close to the end time when the time is about to finish one day we just see God's face from heaven <laughs> you say I've been laughing from the time I created man I've been playing I've been playing stop reading the Bible you think God is in that business you know the way listen the way many believers treat God sometimes we we think God is a joker because we are used to unfaithful people are you following me now and so we look at God and we say, God is one of these people, Jare. God says, I will bless you. And you say, God, don't insult me. I didn't ask you to talk to me. You mustn't talk. The Bible says, God is faithful. That means he's too serious to be playing with you. Are you following me? If he ever allowed your eyes to see anything in the world, take it seriously. He is not playing. Are you listening to me? When he says your years will be like that of a tree, God is faithful. So for every scripture you read, you say God is faithful. He says you have been called the righteousness of God. Is God joking? God is faithful. A drunkard holds his bottle of stout. He has not even finished it. And someone preached and he drank. And, and I mean, as a person is preaching, he's drinking. And the Holy Spirit touches the person and he becomes born again. And the Bible says he's a brand new creation. As if he has never seen again. God, are you lying or you are serious? What's the answer? God is faithful. He's dependable. He's trustworthy. He's too serious to be playing with you. So if the Bible says we have been raised up with Christ and we have been made to sit together in heavenly places far above principalities far above rulers every throne dominion and every name that is named brothers and sisters i ask you a question tonight is god playing is he joking is he playing pranks is he just trying to cajole you to encourage you to continue this journey of faith when god says you will call on one man and a nation will run to you. Is he telling the truth? When he says arise and shine for your light is come. That means he has equipped you with all the tools to arise. God does not speak to people without making preparations. If God looks at you, let me tell you how God talks. God can look at you and say, um, he doesn't talk as if you are supposed to have a need. This is the interesting thing about God. God will look at you and say, um, Deborah, go to UN and tell the Secretary General that I'm not happy with him. That's how God talks. And then he, he leaves you with many, he, he scatters your mind and removes everything that can make you doubt him. God, why? How, 
made the flight open god just said go whenever he speaks let me tell you the moment god is speaking there are other things happening the moment he's speaking if god looks at you and says mr man i am sending you to the president the moment he's saying that the spirit is making all of the arrangements are you following me now for in his word is life in his word is power whenever god speaks the same word that you are hearing is the same word that is making every preparation god is faithful his word is pregnant with all of the resources that will make it become whatever he has pronounced upon you hallelujah and hear what God says Jesus speaking to Satan he says if you are truly the son of God turn these stones into bread what did he say he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that is uttered by that faithful God that whenever God speaks to you he is committed and he is faithful to bring it to pass. Let me tell you something. God will never tell you what is possible with you. Except he's not God. He dwells in a complicated realm called eternity. Even if God says, I will bless you. The way he will say it. You will need faith to always believe God. Are you following me now? That's the proof that is God. You will always need faith to believe God. Because everything he says will challenge you. Lazarus, her brother, is sick. He said that sickness is not unto death. Let's continue doing our business. And then at a point by himself, he said, Our brother sleeping. He said, Lazarus is dead. Let's go and wake him. See how he was excited about it. Would you like to follow a man like that? I've shared with you my story, right? Not a nice experience. Better make sure you hear God before going to any mortuary. Hallelujah. For those of you who have not been, uh, I shared the story of how I went to mortuary to raise the dead three days. Those of you who are medical doctors will laugh at me a bit, right? I went there, I stood there, looked, I said, which of the bodies? There were plenty of bodies. After I prayed once, twice, three times, the guy didn't wake up. I told him, I said, people, get me out of this place. <laughs> get me out of this place. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. Sorry, I'll be using you. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. Malachi chapter 3. After tonight's meeting, many of you will not see any reason to doubt God again in your life. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 6. Yeah. Let's read it together. He said, I am the Lord. I what? I change it not. That means when it comes to my faithfulness, I am highly predictable. Are you following me now? I am highly predictable. When it comes to my faithfulness, you can stake your life at it. He said, I change it not. I change it not. Now, that does not mean his methods do not change. He's talking about his nature, his character. And according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 11, I believe, turn there. Revelation 19, verse 11. You will find out that that word faithful is not just an attribute of him. It's his name. Is his identity. Revelations 19. Am I correct? Verse 11. Yes. Let's read it. One to read. Was called what? Faithful and true. Faithful and true. He said he was called. 
is his name is his identity he cannot separate himself from faithfulness hallelujah so when God speaks to you God is faithful that he is dependable you can take him by his word you can trust him can I tell you something all of the generals of old who shook cities brought territories to a standstill every one of them had nothing but the word of God and they took that word and challenged systems they took that word many of them traveled from their countries to another country at the word hallelujah Sondia Delaja left Nigeria and went to Ukraine at the word of God God called him and God told him he was going to cause a revival and shake Ukraine was God faithful God is faithful and a man entered flight what is taking you to Ukraine God said ah God said and he led a revolution and changed the face of Ukraine till today and forever great men at the word of God a great man called Pat Robertson 700 club hallelujah was a businessman God told him come I want to use you you know what is called 700 club 700 that word 700 was the little group they wanted to raise those who would partner the little TV ministry when it was going to start God spoke to him and he went at the word of God and the faithfulness of God many years later he said today TBN I might challenge it somebody TBN Paul and Jim Crouch you know how they started they just had some money and felt God was leading them to do a TV program so they bought a little slot of time about one hour and when they edit, you know how they finish. They say, if you like this program, send comments, send mails to us. And they were surprised at the mails that came. And the people said, please go again, go again. We'll sponsor it. That little thing today has become what the prophet saw. He says, son of man, what seest thou? He says, the flying school, the power of media and technology in advancing the gospel. TBN today is the largest TV station in the whole world, reaching millions and billions with the gospel because one man chose to take God's faithfulness and rest his faith upon it. I want to ask you a question. What is your faith resting upon? Many of us, our faith is resting upon the words of men a man of God spoke to you. Now, I'm not against believing the God of Joshua, the God of music director. I'm not against it, okay? But when you idolize it, I say, oh, God of Koenoni, answer me. You will only be fortunate if the God of Koenonia is the true God. If paradventure is not the true God, whoever is the God will answer you. Hallelujah. My faith is hinged upon the faithfulness of God. I'm saying this because if we are going to take the systems and take the kingdoms of this world, God is going to be committing dangerous words and instructions upon us that will be bigger than us, bigger than every, bigger than your family put together. And God will expect you to know that he is faithful. God will send you to a house where someone has been on crutches for years and God will say, go and lift the person up. You have been praying in tongues. Oh God, we are going to the nations now. You stand before that house and you stroll as if you don't know that's the gate. And you are coming and God is saying, enter, I sent you. See, the next time you read the Bible, put yourself there. Put yourself there. You are faithful so faithful in your ways you are dependable so dependable in your ways 
You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. God is faithful. Listen, listen to me. There is no one greater than him. He is not one of the many gods. Are you listening to me? He's not one of those gods. He's not a little higher than Satan. A competition was not taken and God came first. He's the only one. He's not first. He's the only one. If God is first, then he's not powerful enough because that means with time, somebody can overtake him. He's called Almighty. He took all the power by himself. Are you listening to me? God is not first position among all the gods. They had a relay and everybody ran. Buddha ran, everybody ran and then God just grabbed them. He just put his head and he said, yes, Jesus, no, no, no. He sits in a class all by himself. When he began to speak to Job, he was asking Job certain questions that only God can answer. Hallelujah. Say, where were you when the morning stars gathered themselves together? Where were you at the foundations of the earth? Who was there? The psalmist began to speak by the Spirit, talking about when God was founding the earth. Everybody in the earth today, no matter how arrogant and stubborn, came and found something. You found people, you found land, you found a God at work. Nobody began anything. So the one who began all things says he is faithful. Let me tell you something. No antichrist and Satan will wrap up this age. I hear people say Satan quickly. The end time is not coming because of Satan. God began the time. He will close the chapter by himself. If God does not close that chapter, even if they bomb every city, he will not come. He will sit quietly on his throne and be looking. Men can preach anything they want to preach and scare people. God will say, I'm watching are you listening to me? God has never been bothered upon his throne and maybe an insufficiency of his ability to see the catastrophe happening to man and he says, hey, hey, hey my word is being threatened. There is only one thing that frustrates the manifestation of the word of God. What do you think the answer is? Man. Man. This is why God is meticulous about you. Satan cannot stop the plan of God. The question is when God speaks to you, if you do not align and believe him and take his word, you cripple him, although he is almighty. The Bible says in Psalm 78, he said they limited God in the wilderness. So a man can limit God. He said they limited God by saying, can God make a table in the wilderness? When they got to the wilderness, they said, oh, at least in Egypt, we used to sit down on the ground and it looks like a dining table. Now we are in this place with heat in, in the afternoon, cold in the night. Oh God, can you feed us? And God said, hey, man. He said, let me show you something. Suddenly, manna would fall and quails would fall. And he said something. He said, let me show you how mighty I am. There will be excess, but don't care about it. Don't save anything. Another one will come tomorrow. God is faithful. I know my God is faithful oh. I have doubted him so many times how many times have we doubted him how do you feel when people doubt your word imagine you told somebody you are going to cook for the person and later you come and you see that the person has gathered maybe he hid food in his in his jacket and as he's saying ah you have come suddenly he falls out yeah ah. say sorry I didn't mean it I I thought the rain, the rain was falling and I thought you would not get back. God is faithful. Do you believe that God can make you what he has said? Do you believe God can transform you? Do you believe God can anoint you? Is he, is he just playing games or does he mean it? God took frail people like us and said, guys, can I use you? Do you believe? You say, Lord, I don't know whether we're... You see the man that said, help my unbelief. People laugh at him. That guy was a very wise man. He was absolutely intelligent. The same thing the, the prophet said. He said, can these bones live? 
it's better to ask God for mercy than to question his faithfulness. When the next time God speaks to you and you are not sure, just say mercy. Find songs about mercy. Just find songs and say, Lord, your mercy. See, many of you don't know how, you don't know how to get your way around God. When you understand the principles of God, David knew God. Ha! David knew how to get God. He would sin and do everything. And then he would come. He would dance and dance and dance and God will be looking on his throne and suddenly God will respond to the praises and David will say oh God he said am I not a sinner and you not a holy one when a man has condemned himself what will you tell him again David was a smart man many of us don't know we don't know there was nothing David wanted that he would not get from God at a point God said who is this man he said, I have found my servant David. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. He said, David is a man after my heart. Whenever there was trouble, David knew what to do. The moment the ark, there was trouble with the ark, David knew what to do. They will move small, offer sacrifice. Move small, offer sacrifice. Whenever God is about to get angry, they will offer sacrifice. That's how the ark reached her. David. Listen. We need Davids in our time. Men who every time you see a situation, you just say, I know. God is faithful. Because he's faithful, he has implicated himself. You just lock yourself somewhere and start dancing. People say, this rent, if it's not paid tomorrow, you are out. You are not crying. Say, God, he is faithful. I know him. The faithfulness of God is an advantage to the believer. That whatever principle he has left in the world you can take advantage the bible makes us understand that a certain king sorry you soon was a certain king in the bible i cannot remember exactly where the the nation of israel alongside another nation ran and they wanted to catch that king and the bible makes us to understand that that king it was obvious the king was going to die you know what the king did he carried his first son the one who will succeed him and slayed the son the moment he did that, the nation of Israel could not move again because God stopped moving. God said, hey, who is this that understands the principle of making me first? If you kill the person who will succeed you, you have killed your future. I said, there's no point. Don't destroy him again. Hallelujah. Solomon, when God said, son, what will I give you? I know many of us say, ah, God, sit down first. <laughs> sit down. You will not stand to and sit down. Bible says you sit and laugh, so sit down. I'm about to make you laugh. Get a notebook. And we will list and list and say, Ah, I forgot my brother. Oh Lord, add him. I forgot this, add him. But look at what Solomon said. When God gave him the opportunity, he said, Lord, thank you. He said, Lord, you have brought these great people. They are your people. You see that? Your people. He committed God's jealousy because he said they are his people. He said, Lord, am i able you have now put me to succeed my father you put me recognizing his authority he said god am i able to help this just give me an understanding heart he knew that god is so faithful he will never just he will give you more than what you have asked for so he said god let me let you do the giving by yourself because i will be foolish and my big mouth will limit me so say it by yourself and he left god it's powerful to let god choose his blessing on you because he will, he, will, he will beat whatever it is that you would have planned. And he said, an understanding heart. And God said, ah, ah, you didn't ask for the life of your enemy or this. He said, I will give you riches. I will give you honor. I will give you all of these things. Say after me, God is faithful. The faithfulness of God means all the principles he has put in the world work. So if you are tithing and you tithe with the mindset that God is faithful, then you know that it's not just church trying to eat your money. Are you following me now? You know that God is faithful. He said, I will rebuke the devourer. Is he joking? Is he joking? So on account of his faithfulness, you commit him. Are you listening to me? If someone comes to you and says there is a shortcut, there is a shorter way of becoming, and you know that's, that's what Satan does? 
when satan knows that there is no you must arrive where god has sent you you say all right let's negotiate let's reduce the journey since it's obvious that you get there that's what he told jesus he said just bow to me i know that the whole thing is to collect these keys let me come and give you bow to me the bible says as soon as zion travels she shall put forth a son are you listening to me so every time you are trusting god and you are going through what people call the birth pains of delivery the faithfulness of god will sustain you through that process men may laugh at you say you are always calling on god you are you are always shouting fanatic praying talking nonsense you will see who marry you sit down there you are talking about god the other time we called you for party you are doing your antisocial i pray let a pope come and marry you suddenly you two begin to ask yourself am i being stupid remember god is faithful your father was there when they were signing the contract and they told him they say oh god add two zeros quickly add two zeros you know how much will be your own and when the right hand wanted to sign god said uh -uh, that's not my ways one billion would have entered your account and you clean your mouth nobody will know and your father said god has promised he will bless me i will not sign this oh yeah walk out of the office let's do our team walk out we'll still sign it in anyway and the people signed it and became billionaires and your father is there he cannot even afford a golf and many people look at you and say now you are your father and your stupid christianity what is the response god is faithful can god bless a man on account of integrity and faithfulness can you place your faith upon him you didn't cheat your colleague was even healthy i can help you i can give you question three question five i don't know one very well but at least i can help you with half that's see already and you would have done it quietly you were sitting at the back it was evening there was no light the sun was casting this way you would have done your thing quietly the lecturer called you and said just compromise and we'll give you c if you compromise well upper credit or b and you refused and it looks like you are losing out I'm preaching to people who look like they are losing out because they are trusting God. I bring you a message. God is faithful. The faithfulness of God is what commits him to abide by his principles. Are you listening to me? It has not failed anyone. It will not fail you. God is too mighty to start failing from your generation. And so I know that God will not fail me because he is faithful hallelujah are you listening to me so let every doubt tonight fly away from your life because you know god is faithful tonight after this meeting you will call certain people who are about to give up even in your family and tell them hey god is faithful don't give up yet your father i say we shall go to the babala or let's just go whatever he tells us we ask god but let's go and see him god is faithful your mother has been sick 12 years maybe mad or something there's nothing they have not done you have prayed you have prophesied another neighbor went to babalawa and the woman came back fine she's still fine today your mother is still sick they say i won't you go it's just herbs you will not do anything herbs but god is faithful when a believer goes through any challenge on account of trusting God I want you to stand tall and say my God is faithful I shared with the ministers yesterday a vision that I had about three or four days I was just lying down and suddenly I saw a vision it was like a cloud it was about to rain and suddenly I saw a writing he said the one who sent you will never leave you that was a statement the one who sent you will never leave you. Friends, Koinonia today is founded upon the faithfulness of God. Do you understand? Everything we do is founded upon the faithfulness of God. Your life, many of us have been disappointed because we have been trusting men. I've said you trust your teacher, you trust your, your nephew, you trust whoever. Would you 
Say, Lord, I rest in your confidence. I've trusted my father and he didn't send allowance. I said, I trust this, I trust that. God is faithful. I bring you a strong message tonight. God is faithful. The faithfulness of God should give you confidence that whatever principle you are engaging, many of you may be praying, God will wake you and say, pray. There are spiritual um, hosts of wickedness trying to contend in your family. And the more you are praying, the more it's like nothing is happening. You are praying and then in the middle of the prayer, they call you and say, ah! And you know, the people can validate, they can try to partner with Satan to prove that God is not faithful. Hey! Say, what is it? Say, I can't even say it. Don't, don't talk. Say this is serious. And now you are you suddenly your faith turns to foolishness. You have been praying for hours, you are sweating. Now you look like an idiot in your prayer altar. You are just saying, Should I continue or stop? God, what are you saying? I bring you a message tonight. God is faithful. Let your faith lean upon the faithfulness of God. That whatever God has shown you about your life and about your family. I need you to know you are not the first person to trust God. He left a testament to show you all the people that trusted him. Abraham, David. You have not gone through half of what they went through. Many of them went through life and death situations that required minutes. The widow, remember the widow who was broke and they were about, they were about to carry her children. And she said, Lord, she went to the prophet and said, you know my husband worked diligently before God. This is an emergency. Something bad. See, if his recession, it didn't start today. In the land of Samaria, recession was so bad to a point that women were eating their children. Is it? Have we gotten to that point in Nigeria? No, sir. So what are we shouting about? As if There is nothing new under the sun. Is it debt? Is it sickness? Is it financial hardship? God leaves the Bible for you to scrutinize and say, see this. When you truly study scripture, your conclusion will be God is faithful. Whatever excuse or disadvantage, say my father was around, if my mother was around, if my brother didn't die, my elder brother, he just left home, he got missing for 20 years, we have not seen him. And he's the only one who went to school. Now there's nobody to help us. And the Bible says, can a woman forget her suckling child? God is faithful. I bring you a powerful word tonight, challenging every doubt in your heart. That this takeover generation that God is raising are men and women who will master the art of leaning upon his faithfulness. That you know that God is faithful. Because friends, let me tell you something. Challenges will come in this life that will attempt to shake your faith. And the only anchor that you will have is the faithfulness of God. Job was so confident about God when his wife said, see, this embarrassment is too much. You know, when other people talk to you and your wife has not spoken, you still have solace. But when your wife speaks, you know that the issue has gone bad. And Job said, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? He said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Job said, I know. I know. I'm not trying to know. I know that my redeemer liveth. He didn't die a day before my captivity started. I know that my redeemer. What is God not able to raise back to life in your life? What is God not able to change? He created the heavens and the earth in seven days. How many days? If you calculate it mathematically, how long will it take him to change your life? There are six billion people on earth. They have not exhausted a, I mean, a sizable portion of the landmass on earth. And God created that landmass in seven days. Thank God you went to school. Calculate it. How long will it take God to change your life? One moment, an entire land called Samaria, they are eating their children. The next day, the 
they are in abundance. If God says that thing will happen in Nigeria, 99%, including all of us, the anointed men, will not believe it. That God says, by this time tomorrow, or my next week, he said, next week, Koinonia, everybody in Nigeria will be entitled to 30,000 per month once you are 80 years. It will be a new policy that will be passed and there will be resources for it. The prophet that prophesies that kind of thing in Nigeria, if you ever become that prophet, Jamfa, if by any means you prophesy that, the first thing is you go to prison and then Senate will probe you and then every religious body will probe everything out of you. But when it happens, you become a hero. You only become a hero at the other side of obedience. The other side of the word of God. When you can believe God. When you trust Him. Hallelujah. Tonight God gave me a message to shake away every doubt and unbelief in our hearts. And to prepare us to know that depending on the faithfulness of God is the secret of triumph in this life. Every other thing outside of him can fail. Are you listening to me? But there is one who changes not. He said, I am the Lord. I change it not. There is nothing God tells me that I will doubt him again. I've made up my mind. Every time I sense doubt, like David, I will say, Lord, only thou knowest. It's better to be neutral. Uh, sorry, like, like Ezekiel. He said, can these bones live? You know the thing with God? He will let you see it first. But I will say they were very dry. If they were not dry, you could give it some medical explanations. Jamu, some medical explanations, you would have explained how there are still some cations and anions and under certain circumstances, if you can change the pH and do this and take a fraction and culture the cell, then you build it back again. Bible said they were very dry. No hope for anything. Say, can these bones live again? prophet looked. He said, Kai, God, only thou knowest. I refuse to doubt you, O Lord. I now understand that song. Um, please reduce the key. Let me sing it. Be magnified, O Lord. I have made you too small in my eyes. He's not small in his throne. He's in his eyes. And that's a product of how small we have seen him in the world. We are going to sing that song when we get to that part. Oh Lord, forgive me. Make sure you sing it. And I have believed in a lie. What is the lie? That you are unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. This is the prayer tonight. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And in my heart and with my song, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Let's sing the stanza again, everybody. I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh, Lord. Come on, pray from your heart. Forgive me. And I have believed in the lie that you are unable to help but tonight from this message but now oh lord i see my wrong heal my heart and show yourself strong and in my heart and with my song oh lord be mad Oh Lord, when did you start calling yourself a failure? When did you suddenly 
admit the language of Satan and you started calling yourself a failure when did you start calling yourself a defeated fool when did you start calling yourself a powerless Christian when did you lose out and give up on God when did you suddenly start trusting in men to say God you have failed me Nigeria is where we are today because we do not believe God Nigeria is in the Bible, Isaiah 18. There is a prophecy about this great nation. It wasn't just Lord Lugar that brought about Nigeria. We came as a definite product of prophecy. Let me ask you a question. Do you still believe that God is able? Do you still believe that God is faithful? Can God give your sister that child after 10 years? Is he still faithful? Or has he lost his power? Can your brother or your sister still get a job? Your family is suffering on account of righteousness. Can God step in? You are not married today because you have rejected every man who has come in the name of Satan. Is God still faithful? You would have been on first class right now if you had kept compromising from 100 level. And people have laughed at you and you are afraid I will not get a job. We have made you too small in our eyes, oh Lord, forgive us, and we have believed in the lie that you are unable to help us. Hey. But now, oh Lord, we see our wrong. Heal our heart and show yourself strong. And in our heart and with this song, tonight, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, I bring you a message of hope. Where you have failed, go back again. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. I'm speaking to the spirits of men tonight. God is faithful. You stop praying because you thought your prayer was not generating energy. That there is no difference between you and a believer. I speak to you tonight. God is faithful. God is faithful. God spoke to you that by the middle of the year, there are certain blessings that he would have brought to your life. Right now you are in the second week of May. There is no iota of it. God is still faithful. God told you there is a level of grace. A level of insight and intimacy you will be walking in until now you have not seen it God is faithful many people call you and say where is your God I bring you a message tonight God is faithful now is not the time to give up there's a song I won't give up Lord I won't give up I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. I'll keep holding on for the change is coming. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. No, no, no. No, I won't give up. I keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up. I prophesy to you. God is faithful. 
until for the last time now I won't give up this is my confession Lord I will not give up on you you are faithful till the answer comes till the vision comes to pass you spoke to me by these two immutable things God cannot lie God cannot lie Let's sing it one more time. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. I won't give up. I keep holding on till my end is come. It will come. Though the vision tarries, though the word tarries, though the prophecy tarries, it will come. It will come. One more time. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. I bring you a message of faith, a message of hope tonight. God is faithful. I won't give up, Lord. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no matter what happens, in the midst of the sickness, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of every challenge, you sing like Don Muen. Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles on what it seems today. And though I haven't lost my faith Generals who are weary But tonight the commander in chief Is rising faith from his army But I don't know what to say And I don't know where Let hope rise tonight That's the language of faith With all that's in my heart I will see, I will pray, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow, through the pain, through the sickness, through the disappointment, I will see and I will pray, my God is faithful, for your word is true, come on sing, I will sing, I will sing. I will, I will pray. It doesn't matter the darkness. Even through the sorrow, through the pain, through the lack, through the tears. We lift our hands to honor you. I like that last part. He says. I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. Sing it again. I lift my hands to honor you through the pain. Although you are crying, but you cry with your hands lifted. You cry, but you are saying, God, you are faithful. I have not seen the result. I have been praying. I have been fasting. But I know God is faithful. I lift my hands, I will cry with my hands lifted. Come on, confess unto God. I lift my hands to honor you. So I will cry, but with my hands lifted up. Every time a general lifts his hand, the war is not over. For though he slay me, yet will I rise again. He said, though the vision tarries, though the vision tarries, can you rise up on your feet and say, Lord, I honor you through the disappointments. I honor you through the pain. I honor you through 
through the tears i honor you through the lack i honor you i have not seen the miracle but i honor you i refuse to complain i honor you come on prophesy lord i honor you i honor you i honor you i honor you you are faithful you are faithful the finance will come the lifting will come the glory will come the grace will come my story will change this is not the end of it i lift my hands and i honor you come on pray I lift my hands. I honor you. With tears in my eyes, I still honor you. For God is faithful. Let your faith lean upon the faithfulness of God. By these two immutable things, it is impossible. Pray in the spirit. Generate faith. The vision will come to pass. Yes, you are the savior in your family. It is not a lie. You are the one. The word is still true. Yes, you will be that prophet. You will be that apostle. You will be that teacher. It does not look like it. Your ministry will flourish. Yes, your business will flourish. Yes, your spiritual life will flourish. Exalted high above the worship of the people of the earth. I see the Lord. He's exalted I see above every Lord. doubt, above every fear tonight. Give me a prophetic word for you. Please turn to Exodus. My God is faithful. Verse 9. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea. The Bible says the Egyptians pursued them. He said and overtook them. Surrounded by trouble all over. But God spoke. Didn't he speak? Can I tell you something? Look at me. The fact that God spoke to you does not exempt you from challenges. Are you listening to me? Victory. The victorious life is not the life without challenges. The victorious life is the life that conquers every challenge. For when you serve God, you will get to a point in your life where challenges become your daily bread. And if your faith does not stand upon the faithfulness of God, then you might not last. Are you listening to me? 
and his army and overtook them encamping by the sea verse 10 and when pharaoh drew near what happened the children of israel lifted up their eyes and behold the egyptians marched after them and they were in what they were in what they were in great fear there are times in your life when situations will surround you surround your family nobody's working in your family from your father to your mother to everybody to you there are times that these egyptians come and surround us and at that point even you will begin to doubt the integrity of god's word but let's read on oh i have a prophecy for you tonight the children of israel lifted up their eyes and behold the egyptians marched after them and they were in great fear and the children of israel cried unto the lord 11 and they said unto moses because there were no graves look at me how many of you have ever wished that god didn't take you to the point you are now have you ever got to that point where you say lord i wish you why did you anoint me i was minding myself the power of god hits me i didn't ask for it look at the trouble you have caused me I follow me you pray in tongues in your house they call you a witch better stop that where did you get that from now you're in trouble everybody doesn't like you in your neighborhood and you say lord was i doing bad without praying in tongues was i going to miss heaven why did you add this complication to my life this is exactly what the israel like the same people who were dancing and say thank you jesus there is a way situations can overwhelm you that you ask some questions that by the time you come out you feel foolish that you ask those questions you will never believe that it's you that can ask that question oh god why me why did you give me this stupid father the same man you say i love with all my heart now he has become a stupid father because of the heat of the challenges that are upon you your father will look at your mother and say you are such a did i really marry you what happened to me ha ah, after 30 years and when the whole situation pipes down, he can look at you and say, I didn't mean it. There was no school fees. The Egyptian said, Were there no graves in Egypt? Look at Moses. Moses innocently came to deliver them. Now he's suffering from it, for it. To die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us from Egypt? Is not this the word that we tell thee in Egypt saying let us alone that we may serve who look at the people who are talking God's covenant people but let's read verse 13 powerful and Moses said unto the people fear not tell your neighbor fear not say fear not can I tell you something look up every challenge you face in your life is not as bad as it initially looks satan has mastered the art of magnifying challenges and he says god spoke to you he said three days now it's two weeks as if it's 20 years and he will magnify it he will convert the hours to seconds and make it look far and say is god not unfaithful and he will say yes but moses lived unto the people and he said fear not stand still and see the salvation soteria the healing the deliverance the blessing the breakthrough that the lord will bring he said for the egyptians this is my prophecy that god said i should speak to you he said for the egyptians that ye see today ye shall see them again no more no that's not the end of it don't say amen yet there is one last word here forever let me tell you something there are certain things you are going through right now in your life is called a phase of life when you break through you will never return there again forever oh yes there is such a thing as that he said these egyptians that you see these ones you are you are seeing them look at them very well because the only thing you have about them is the memories. 
God will wipe them and clean them from your life. The Lord will fight for you. Verse 14. The Lord will fight for you. He said, and you will hold your peace. You have tried fighting and fighting. Now the Lord. There is a reason why he is called the Lord. The Lord himself is rising up to fight for you. When God fights for you, you will win. Oh. You must win. You will win for sure. The Lord is about to rise up and fight for many people. Many families. Many of us in this place. Because we trust him. He said, I the Lord, I change it not. The Lord told me to tell you that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Egyptians of sickness, Egyptians of failure, Egyptians of bondage, all kinds of Egyptians. The Lord is saying that these Egyptians you see today, that the Lord himself will arise. Let me tell you, there are a few times in the Bible where God has revealed himself as a man of war. And for every time he reveals himself as a man of war, I want you to know that the defeat will be utter. Because he will finish it and sign his signature as the mighty one on it. I don't know about you, but I believe the Lord. And I believe his word. We are going to pray right now. Two prayer points. Hallelujah. Two prayer points. The first prayer point is we are going to say, Lord, I have faith in you. I know you are faithful. I kill doubt and fear. Everything that has made me to doubt your word and to doubt your promises. Whatever it is that has turned faith into foolishness in my heart. I pray, let there be a restoration of the faith of the Son of God. He said, contend for the faith that was once delivered unto you. Contend for the faith. Go ahead and pray. Matabo satabaladabai. Rabo seke bronte shapaya. God is faithful. Lord, I contend for the faith. I believe you. I trust you. You will not fail me. Pray. Say, God, you are dependable. My supervisor will not frustrate me. You are dependable. Pray. You are dependable. I will not keep living from hand to mouth forever. I know you will change my story. I depend on you. I depend on you. I will grow to become a general and you will use me for your glory. Hallelujah. 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 The next prayer point. We are going to pray. And you are going to say, Lord, give me a personal revelation of your faithfulness. You have had a teaching here. But you are going to say, Lord, do something between me and you that will convince me beyond every shadow of doubt that you are a faithful God. Activate my spirit. Quicken me by the agency of the Holy Ghost. Do something in my spirit, man, oh God. That I will not believe you today and doubt you tomorrow. That I will not trust you on Monday and doubt you on Tuesday. Grant unto me by revelation and understanding. Pray that I will comprehend. That I will comprehend. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I am convinced. 
that God is faithful. In the name of Jesus, I look away from every limitation, from every doubt, and every fear, and I fix my gaze on Jesus. Jesus, I know you will not fail me. You are faithful and you will prove yourself in my life. I know my change will come. Hallelujah. I want you tonight to leave this meeting. Don't just get excited and get emotional. I want you to leave and begin to search through scriptures. Are you listening to me? All through this week. Thank God many of you have finished exams. Let this week be a week of searching. All of the attributes of God that demonstrates his faithfulness in the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, you can use Google and search. Let those scriptures search, read it. Lock yourself and meditate upon it until it becomes your revelation that God is faithful. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. My faith is upon the faithfulness of God. This is why I smile all the time. That's why you will never see me put my hand on my head and you say, what is wrong? And I say, Kai, this life. Outside of God, I am a dead man. I don't need to stop breathing. I am a dead man. Oh, but with him. Hallelujah. Carry that faith. And anywhere God takes you, I assure you, you will reign. And you will rule. The word of God will create things out of nothing right before your eyes. On account of the faithfulness of God. I command every discouragement to melt away in this place. I command every doubt and fear to give way. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy the spirit of faith and of the revelation of the faithfulness of God. That you receive a baptism of the revelation of the faithfulness of God. That you, you will be so convinced that God is faithful. That whenever doubt arises, it will melt away in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right, very quickly, if you're worshiping with us, when I bring before you right now the grand formula for wealth and abundance, pray in tongues for one minute. Your life is about to change right now. Please pray inside and outside, wherever you are. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. Hallelujah. The day I found this key, I shouted. I not Oyedepo's, I will never be poor. My own. I shouted. Shouted. Where is the document? Let me sign out of poverty forever and ever till Jesus returns. Ready? Write this down. The formula for wealth and abundance. I told you there is an exact formula. There is an exact formula. Ready? Write this down. The amount of money we receive. The amount of money we receive. Open bracket. Your wealth or your income. Your wealth or your income. The amount of money we receive. Will always. Write always in capital letter will always be in exact proportion the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to then write colon number one there are three things i'm about to tell you now the amount of money we receive your wealth your income will always this is a law 
be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do the amount of money you receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do put in bracket the product or the service you offer the demand underline the word demand the demand for what you do number two your ability open bracket your skill expertise proficiency and then you can close it your ability to do what you do your ability to do what you do and number three the difficulty in replacing you the amount of money listen listen the amount of money we receive this is a law please listen i'm giving you a key that will set you free forever the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand for what you do number two your ability to do it and number three the difficulty in replacing you look at what you just wrote the demand for what you do your ability to do what you do and the extent to which it is difficult to find another replacement to you this is the grand key the irrefutable law when you break prosperity to its unit the atom of prosperity is this the amount of money joshua selman will ever receive in his life is proportional to the demand for what i do my ability to do what i do and the difficulty in replacing me the difficulty in getting another alternative to me let's take it one by one number one the demand for what you do this is the formula for wealth brothers and sisters i searched and i found it every millionaire i studied every billionaire i studied every wealthy family every wealthy church every wealthy business subscribe to this formula the amount of money where you are sitting right now looking at me the amount of money that will come into your life will be in exact proportion of the demand for what you do your ability to do what you do and the difficulty in replacing you write this down never try to provide a service where there is no notable demand for it never try to provide a service where there is no demand for it this is what makes a lot of people fail financially you are answering a question nobody is asking hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying now look at this look at this if if this is my business for instance the level to which i will succeed in this business is first if there is a demand for this is that true if there is no demand for this who will pay you for it nobody so many people are starting companies and corporations without asking whether there is a notable demand for what you are trying to provide the first key to wealth is to realize that you are only paid for something when there is a demand for it 
if there are no children in a place why will you sell pampas there is no demand for it are you getting what i'm saying never try to start a business when you want to get a job trust god to get a job in a place a corporation a firm where there is a demand for their service Nitel in Nigeria is almost packed out because technology diminished the demand for their service are you seeing that now when there was a demand what happened they were rich they had money are you getting what I'm saying typewriters those who sell typewriters today if they did not change will they be rich because there is no more demand never try to provide any service when there is no demand this is the reason why ministers have their churches full because there is a demand for what they are giving they think they are rich because they are preaching the gospel hear me koinonia this crowd inside and outside is here tonight because there is a demand are you getting what i'm saying this ministry is excelling not just because god called us god called us yes but we are responding to a demand for as long as there is a demand for my anointing i remain relevant for as long as there is a demand for the dimensions of the realities of the kingdom that i teach they will continue to be relevant The amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion not to what you do the demand for it you started a business you never found out whether there was a demand for it that's why when wealthy people are about to come to Africa and start businesses the first thing they do is they send envoys representatives to come and give them statistics they are testing the waters to see if there will be a demand they will never come to Africa until they find out that there is a demand to the size to which even if they fail, they will still succeed. That's how the world they think. Is God speaking to us? Write this down. Continue the points that you wrote at first. You either create a demand first. When you want to provide any kind of service, spiritual, financial, educational, whatever, you must either create a demand for it first open bracket through exposure orientation and advertisement you either create a demand for it or satisfy an existing demand look up please okay write, write it down and look up you either create a demand for what you want to offer that means make people want it or see that they already want it by default and supply it let me tell you something look up this is the key behind the wealth of evil people i'm not being biased an evil man will never supply anything he has not ascertained a demand for that's the reason why when others are running away somewhere he knows there will be a demand for that thing and then he will go there unconsciously unconsciously Many people do not know this is the law that they are fulfilling. As at, as at when the phones come into Nigeria, it depends on which one you are talking about. Generally, Nitel had one thing like that, what our protocol used now, right? That's how it started. Now, watch this. Did you know that until phones came in terms, I mean, our wireless mobile communication now until phones came we we had that one that you dial right you touch it and then it goes back you continue and then it goes back seven three one four two and then your state code you, you remember that right watch this some people sat down at the cutting edge of technology and they said no we have something to offer and this is what they said these people do not know about that possibility so we use advertisement to create a demand when they brought out indomie in nigeria what happened they use advertisement and you are watching they show a beautiful lady and she picks up the the indomie and she's taking it and you are just celebrating what they are doing is they are creating a demand immediately after that you say uh, please 
go and buy me um, this and that and that. They create a demand for it or they meet an existing demand. Write this down. Always respond to demands and you will be rich. Respond to demands. I think it was the last school of ministry students. I was teaching them on finance in school of ministry. And I told them, if I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I won't sell pure water. If I'm to do business in a crusade ground, I will do mobile toilets. Is there a demand for it? You are joking. You are joking. Sooner or later, no matter how bold you stand, you are in a crusade ground from 3 p.m. in the afternoon for a night vigil. Abba, you will need to ease yourself. And I won't be there. You will even know it's my own. But you just see me smiling. The goodness of God. As they are worshiping, I will lift my hands. Because the amount of money that comes to me is dependent on the demand. So I look for the demand. What are they looking for so desperately that they will be willing to do anything? May God help you that you are not purging on that crusade ground. You will demand my service a thousand times. And that's good for me. That's exactly the kind of atmosphere I want. As far as my business is concerned. It may look messy, but forget the money is not dirty. You don't defecate on the money. Right? Are you learning something tonight? When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming, I want to give you a secret, a big secret right now. Many of you will not imagine how much you would have paid for if you were in a business class. When a demand for a value or service becomes overwhelming or very high, listen, your wealth index grows faster and you can easily get back to your feet even when your business crashes. Let me explain to you what I mean. There is a way, there is a way there can be so much demand on your product that even if you mess up, the demand is too high that you become too big to fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? Absolutely. Look at this. How many days did fuel go off in Nigeria? I mean, I know there's still there are still pieces of scarcity, but remember the time when all the market has went. Within 72 hours, Nigeria lost billions. It literally crippled them because of the huge demand for energy. Is that true? Huge demand for energy. There are certain values that when you provide, it becomes almost, humanly speaking, impossible to fail because the demand is, is, is overwhelming. Pure water. Pure water will never fail in Nigeria till Jesus comes. For as long as there is sun, there will be need for it. We drink water like camels in Nigeria. You finish one bag of have you seen people take water somebody will just take and hold one and squeeze it like an orange take another one take another one that's money going five five naira or ten naira if it's cold right and 50 naira just disappeared right now bang, 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 bang. and the person selling it is smiling and the person consuming it is paying every day you must bath at least I believe yes you should bath I'm speaking to the wider audience not just you there are thousands of people for you, right so the demand for soap will never stop and the demand is so high every day somebody's birthday photographers will never run out are you getting me restaurants will never pack out if they pack out is a demonic thing because you are supposed to eat normally three times a day. If you are busy or you don't have money at least once. If you are fasting, that's alright. Praise God. I'm showing you that so many people are poor because they have not responded to demands. Those who have responded to the demands are the ones who are rich. 
because you will pay for anything you cannot do for yourself he said Lord whatever you cannot do guys keep paying in the restaurant every day because they cannot do it for themselves always write this down please let's hurry up always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it i repeat always be absolutely sure that there is sufficient and sustainable demand for the value or service you wish to provide before working on providing it never get to do something without ascertaining that there will be consistent and sustainable demand for it the amount of money we receive will always be in exact proportion to number one the demand the demand watch this let me bring it to ministry so that you will understand watch this as a man of god do you know the reason why the healing and miracle ministries have crowds and inevitably have finances and the rest because there is a high demand for that grace are you getting me there is a high demand usually the largest crowds come during the miracle service there are people who because of distance cannot come for every service but during the miracle service they will pay the price and come hallelujah because there is a demand so if the demand for this anointing continues koinonia will only keep getting higher and higher are you getting what i'm saying now is there a demand for what you do or are you just doing it have you ascertained that there is a demand the office where you are working is one thing for you to be employed but it's another thing for the service you are receiving to be needed never try to answer a question nobody is asking the second point your ability to do what you do we said the amount of money you receive will be in exact proportion to your ability your skill your expertise ability and skill and expertise is how you become a leader and a pace setter in what you currently do skill and ability there is a direct relationship between skill and financial abundance please never forget this there is a direct relationship between skill between expertise between competence and proficiency and financial abundance it's not enough to be anointed it's not enough to have something to say or just to talk there must be skill there must be skill you are enjoying what he's playing because although we're in a spiritual house there is skill you see that i'm preaching you think i'm just talking until i break down the psychological implication of the things i'm saying and you see all the things that are interplaying in the midst of my sermon you are laughing in the midst of my sermon i'm rebuking you in the midst of my sermon i'm challenging you all of this requires skill it's not just anointing are you getting what i'm saying your ability to do what you do i love how some people that peel orange have you seen those people that sell orange they are so flawless you bring orange to them and you see them talking they're just talking and peeling it when you see a master do something it becomes flawless that's how you must be if you want to be rich don't think rich people are dafts rich people are highly skilled people in the area where they function those who are promoted in every organization are those who are skilled many believers do not pay attention to skill and expertise we pray in tongues we fast but organize any program for capacity building and see people reject it they think it's carnal they think it's not spiritual so the man sets up the church and he does not know how to speak to people 
you enter the presence of rich people and you don't know the skill to communicate to them and so they throw you out of that place you speak to business people and you don't have the skill to talk to them ministry is not about preaching and throwing people on the ground there is a lot of skill and proficiency to it if you think it's so easy try it and you will be shocked that you'll be saying what everybody should laugh and they'll be looking at you with anger that's when you won't know what to say again you will know that it's not just about cracking jokes there is a skill not just a spirit the bible says and david led the people with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands david did not throw goliath just through the anointing it took skill the benjamites theologically speaking they were so skilled in throwing slings that they could diverge arrows in other words you could shoot an arrow and they will use a sling and diverge it they were that skilled so don't you think god just came upon this guy samson was not just anointed alone he was skilled bezalel have you read about bezalel the spirit of creativity and excellence came upon him the three hebrew boys the bible says and in all the matters that they were tested in they were found ten times better how many times in what you do do you have ability or just desire you set up a restaurant nobody likes your food something is wrong there is a demand for it but there is no skill and you think it's demons you are fasting and running around your parlor whereas you should go and settle down and meet a ketra not a mediocre a ketra buy the truth it will cost you buy the truth wealthy people are the ones who can pay one million naira to bring a mentor into their lives to teach them something you would think it's a waste. You are paying somebody one million just to talk to you, but they value it that much. How many believers can pay for knowledge? They don't want to. They just want to receive average, and so they remain mediocre. It's God speaking to us. It takes skill. What he's playing, he didn't just learn it by the anointing. An anointing came upon his skill. The fire will never fall until there is a sacrifice. What skill are you lifting up to God to anoint? He said he will anoint the works of your hands. I'm not just talking of business. I'm talking of skillful business. See yet thou a man, diligent, 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 skillful. Many preachers are not skillful. Many business people are not skillful. Many employers and employees are not skillful. Skill is not just an impartation. It is learned. It is learned. It will cost you. You will sit at the feet of uncommon mentors to learn. But are you willing? Everybody say ability. I made a vow in my life that everything, every service and every value I want to offer my generation, I will be a master in it. Let me tell you, as you see me like this don't don't let these suits and all these things deceive you i'm such a workaholic you would not like my life you will like me when you see me on suit standing if you come close to me you will run away from me because my life is irritating there's no room for laziness whatsoever there are things i do every day no matter how much i'm tired do you think preparing for this you don't want to know how many books were read you don't know how many books I read, how many materials I consult to just bring one message. One message that you just hear for two hours. You don't become wealthy when you are lazy if you must bring facts. How many videos I've downloaded on YouTube, listened to them in fasting and prayer, converted them to MP3s to listen to them, listen to three hours, six hours videos and summarize them in major points work on them edit the part of them that is unscriptural and add a scriptural touch to it that's hard work brother and all that is for one sermon that you just receive as wow the sermon is impressive are you getting what i'm saying i returned back 
we, we went to Peter that on Saturday and then on Sunday I was there on Monday Tuesday I passed through Abuja to Koki State to go and greet the family of, of our dear one who transited and from there I returned the school of ministry students were there I think it was, it was yesterday right I returned as I returned I just went to take my bath and rush we were here having lectures from 6 to about past 10 I had barely rested when I got up and then I had to plan do a lot of things had to run to town see a few people this afternoon I am here first thing tomorrow morning I'm off to Kaduna we have a meeting in Kaduna from Kaduna we're passing straight to Kano for an evening meeting Sunday we are back three o'clock on the dot there is lecture school of ministry Monday there is counseling from morning till night and next week is my birthday hello don't you ever hold on don't talk we'll talk about birthday after the service if you ever think wealthy people do not deserve their money change your mind tonight you don't know how hard they work there are people six o'clock their shops are open they close past 12. there are others who open to 12 and they close to seven skill diligence you get up and you say you're a motivational speaker and they ask you what is success uh, according to Brian Tracy according to you what is it you get up and you're a preacher and all you are doing is copying and pasting messages as you are preaching they'll help you complete it and tell you where you got the sermon from and they will tell you the site you downloaded no originality it takes skill you think it's easy to to buttress points I can communicate any point and sing a song to support it listen it's not just anointing it is skill right you know how many things the worship team people don't eat to sing well you just know every time you hear them you are kneeling down find out how many things are out of bounds for them things they love so much he that desires mastery is temperate in all things what are you willing to give up to be skillful don't just say our ah, apostle is blessed guy koinonia is lucky oh wait until you see our leadership trainings wait and see the the, the 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 workshops and the retreats that we have for our leaders wait and see the way we build them you come and see the the various departments you think these guys are just standing by default look at the ushers standing and position they have been trained to be sensitive to the anointing 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 Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.